I'm Celeste Veroni, and I just recently finished a discipleship training school with Youth with a Mission in Honolulu, Hawaii. I grew up in a Christian home, a Christian family. My parents were very strong believers and had really strong relationships with the Lord. Um, but growing up, a lot of my faith was the faith of my parents. And as much as I knew that it was real, um, there was just something in me that knew that I could go deeper with the Lord. And once I began hungering after the Lord like that, um, He was so faithful to show me that He really is big enough to be um, my, have my own faith in Him. I was born with a disease called cerebral palsy, which means that I had no spinal control or motor skills. Um, there wasn't fully developed um, brain cells in my brain, um, and it, I was bound by this disease that um, didn't allow me to sit up or walk. Or um, I have a twin sister, and she was just developing a lot quicker than I was, and the doctors always told my mom that twins develop at different rates, but then after a while my mother realized that um, it, something was wrong, so she brought me into the doctor and they diagnosed me with cerebral palsy. So after a while my mother, um, she kept bringing me to physical therapy and um, doing all of the, the normal things that you would do with a child who has cerebral palsy. Um, and one day she, um, after talking to um, one of her friends um, who said that what, what good is it if Celeste is smart if she won't be able to walk and my mother said that she became righteously angry and just cried out to the Lord and said God I don't care if Celeste ever walks on this earth as long as I know she can run in heaven with you and she just broke down and cried and just began to trust in the Lord and His sovereignty and knew that He had a plan and a purpose for this. And um, that same night, I, I stood up, or no, I, I pushed up on the stairs and my mom was like, oh wow, that's amazing, you know, like the physical therapy must really be working. And then the next day I, I began to crawl and um, move normally um, and my mom started thinking, maybe the Lord is healing her. So by the end of that week, I had developed fully the same um, rate as my twin sister, Charity. And my mom was so excited and she brought me back to the doctor and the physical therapist. And uh, the physical therapist came out and said, Rita, you brought me the wrong twin. This girl has nothing wrong with her. And my mom was ecstatic and she said, no, I think the Lord is healing her. So my mom brought me back to the, the neurologist and they did the brain scans and everything and um, they called her back and said, Rita, I don't know what to tell you, but we can't find a single damaged cell in the back of her brain that would be causing the cerebral palsy. We, there's nothing more that we can do. I mean, we can run more tests. And my mom said, no, no, the Lord has completely healed her and I'm going to receive that. Being able to to have that as part of who I am and realizing the faithfulness of the Lord even every day that I get up and I can walk and I can move my legs and um, that I should have been in a wheelchair for the rest of my life that was what the the doctor said and and God changed my life completely even in that and he's done so much more than just a physical transformation in my life and I'm forever grateful for him and I, sh I shouldn't even be walking but I'm able to go on the mission field and it's, it's a huge blessing and an amazing calling that I'll never ever regret that I have. I have always wanted to do a discipleship training school um, ever since high school when my older sister Bethany did uh, discipleship training school or DTS. And the Lord has always put a desire for missions in my heart um, ever since I was younger. Um, I studied missions a lot, even through high school. And um, after I graduated high school, I went to college and then moved to Greece for one year and did missions work there. But I was really just hungering and desiring um, accountability and just being discipled and learning more about the Lord and being able to put that into practice instead of just giving um, right off the bat, just really receiving discipleship and learning more about the nature and character of God and what He desires for missionaries. 
Youth with a Mission's main slogan is uh, to know God and to make Him known, and they fully believe that, and they're very passionate about that, especially um, Youth with a Mission in Honolulu. It focuses on Southeast Asia and the South Pacific Islands, um, so many of their outreaches focus on those places. I remember the one week that was the most influential for me was um, learning more about the Holy Spirit and um, just how amazing it is to live by the Spirit and not by the flesh and to not um, follow your own desires, but if you follow the desires of the Lord, then your life will be so much more fulfilling and you'll be able to live out, a, uh, live your life in a way that is so much more powerful than anything that you can ever do on your own because you know that the Lord is calling you to it. About a week and a half into lecture phase, they uh, gave us four locations to pray about um, where we should go on outreach and they gave us 15 minutes to go and decide and just really press in and hear from the Lord where we should go. So it was between uh, Samoa, Vanuatu, Thailand, and Nepal. And um, it was it was really a struggle for me. I was deciding between two places, and I just I was really wondering if I was hearing from the Lord. And He reminded me. He said, "Celeste, the whole world needs to hear my name. There's no wrong choice. So go where you feel like you want to go, and I will be with you in that decision." So um, I really felt like I should go to Thailand. So. I was really excited to go and um, we have a team time so everyone who decided to go to Thailand we met for the first time and when we met we found out that we were also going to the Philippines which was so amazing because I'd always wanted to go to the Philippines because a lot of the children that I taught in the Greek school were Filipino and I'd just grown a love for the people already and um, my heart was really for them already so it was just really cool to see how the Lord was faithful in that. The week before outreach, the Lord really began stirring in me just an excitement um, because before that I hadn't, I, I didn't have my money to go on outreach and I was really, um, I knew that the Lord could provide but I still had doubt and so I was really almost disconnecting from the whole um, outreach experience and then He called me to a higher uh, level of dependency on him and I finally let go of my control and realized that he was faithful to what he's called me to so um, within that week he had provided all the money and it just made me so excited to go on outreach and I was like okay this is what I'm supposed to be doing this is what you've called me to I'm so stoked to do this you know so we were in Baguio for three weeks and we went to several villages during that time and um, we helped build a house in one of the villages. I remember one of, one, the first, no, the second night that we were in Baguio, um, we went out to this village. We rode a very long jeepney ride um, up the mountains and we came to a village that had never seen foreigners before and that in itself was amazing just to see how receptive they were to, to people who weren't like them. So we, uh, we gave a gospel mes message and did a few dances and um, then we had an altar call at the end and it was amazing because they were so receptive and about 20 or 25 people came up and gave their lives to the Lord and it was just phenomenal because it was the second night of ministry that we were there and so we decided hey let's not stop here let's see if anyone wants to be healed so we um, we called up anyone who who needed healing and um, it was really amazing because um, as we were praying we we just we kept praying um, I know I kept praying that you know, the Lord's glory would be shown and that it would be totally the Holy Spirit working in them and that it would be nothing of ourselves and that um, it wouldn't be about the story that we had about it, but it would be to reveal the glory of the Lord.